Joe Douglas has just taken his first step towards God status. He has signed Joe Namath to the... He has signed Ryan Khalil as the Jets center. We gotta talk about that. Hey guys, welcome back to Jets HQ. I'm Howie and I am really super excited. Just when you thought it wasn't possible for Joe Douglas to be thought of higher in the Jets community, he goes and does something so unbelievable. Uh, thinking outside of the box, none of us, none of us, including myself, um, had even envisioned this. So when we last talked, we were, we, were, we were bagging on the Jets offensive line, which is really terrible. And um, our center position, which is, let's just say, young. And uh, we were talking about what was possible for the Jets to do about it this season. And we were pretty much left with the idea that Jonathan Harrison was going to learn on the fly. Um, and while Jonathan Harrison would probably turn out to be a pretty good lineman someday, he's got a lot of work to do. And no one knew if he would be able to play center full time. So who was left on the, on the waiver wire? Who was left as a free agent? There was literally nobody. Um, who was left to trade for? Nobody, nobody in the NFL is going to trade their starting center. So, so what do you do? Um, well, if you're a regular person, you resign yourself to the fact that while you've put all of these great parts together um, and spent you know, $120 million on upgrading the team, that your offensive line was going to be a shambles and basically not allow the team to perform the way it should, even with all of that money invested. So you hire a general manager um, who comes along with a fantastic pedigree, huge signing for us just to sign the general manager. Um, and people thought, well, you know, he's going to put his stamp on the Jets and he's going to turn us into the Eagles and take us to the Super Bowl and whatever like yeah, sure, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well, this man takes thinking outside of the box to the entire new level. He goes and says, you know what? There's no free agents. There's no waivers. There's nobody to trade for. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign a guy who's about to become a Hall of Famer and stick it right into everybody's nose. It's just amazing. So he signs Ryan Khalil out of retirement. Um, it's, it, it, the reason that this is so amazing is not just the fact that he paid him $8.3 million for the season, um, for just the one season, which is, which is fine for a really, really, really good Pro Bowl future Hall of Fame center. It's good money. Um, and it's, it's, it's not a bad signing. But when you, when you look at the fact that the man doesn't need any money, you know, he's, he's super wealthy, his family is super wealthy, and he's a all-time Carolina Panthers star. He played every year of his career with the Carolina Panthers. And he comes out of retirement to play for the New York Jets. And I, whatever Joe Douglas said to him was amazing. Now, Joe Douglas did say that it took him every single day since the day he sat in the Jets general manager's chair until the day he signed Ryan Khalil to talk him into this um, signing to talk him into coming out of retirement and playing for the Jets, and I believe it because I don't know what he said. It's just amazing. I know I know that there's the USC connection with him and Sam Darnold, which is fantastic. That's probably one of the deciding factors. Um, but for the man to come off out of retirement and basically spurn the Carolina uh, Panthers uh, fan base, who has lifted him to a you know a high status among themselves, they are now pretty pissed off. Believe it or not, I mean they're pretty mad that uh, Ryan has decided to play with the Jets. But this is a fantastic signing. I, th there's just no way that we can go wrong with this. Now, I know that Ryan Khalil had, has an injury problem. Um, he had a couple of injuries the last two seasons of his career. Um, but it, it sure seems like the man wouldn't come out of retirement unless he was over them. And the Jets are going to find that out. The next few days, he's actually not going to practice with the team. He's going to be going through conditioning um, drills, and he's going to be going through physical examinations and all kinds of different things to make sure that uh, he's going to be able to withstand the test of a season. But it, it's just an amazing, amazing signing. Way to think out of the box, Joe Douglas. Just a feather in your cap, and you've just raised... If you could possibly raise your status with Jet fans, you've just done it. 
So that was amazing. So let, let's introduce Ryan Khalil to the, the people who have been living under a rock for the last 12 years. Uh, Ryan Khalil is a center who came out of USC. He's 34 years old, and um, he had played for the Carolina Panthers his entire career. He, he was drafted in uh, 2007. 2007, he was a second-round pick. He was the 59th pick overall. Um, he's six foot two, 300 pounds, and currently he's 34 years old. Uh, with USC, he won two national championships, and he was the first-team All-American in 2006, um, and he was also the Morris Trophy winner in 2006. Um, he had played for Carolina for, the, for 12 seasons. He made five Pro Bowls, 2009, 10, and 11, 2013, and 2015. Um, he was a two-time All-Pro uh, both uh, in 2013 and 2015, and he was a second-team All-Pro in 2011. Um, he was the all, on the All-Rookie team in 2006, and of the 148 games that he played, he started 145. Um, it's just, I mean, the pedigree on this guy is unbelievable. So, you know, um, now we have Ryan Cleo and Jonathan Harrison can sit back and actually learn the position from a Hall of Famer. Now, I mean, aside from signing Nick Mangle, <laughs> I mean, this is this is the best thing that could have happened. It's just it's just unbelievable. Now, it's obvious to me that if Joe Douglas had been in the GM's chair prior to the draft during the free agency period, we would have probably signed a, a center like Matt Paradis or uh, Mitch Morse. Obviously, Joe Douglas is is focusing on the offensive line, which is thank God, because that is what the Jets need. And the Jets had, a, had an all-pro line the last time they made, it, made deep runs into the playoffs, and this is what we need to protect the investment that we're putting into this team. And Sam Darnold and Le'Veon Bell, um, this is exactly what we need. Now, of course, Joe Douglas, if you're listening, you could add one more feather to that cap and go ahead and trade for Trent Williams, from the Redskins and uh, pick him up at left tackle, which would allow us to slide Kelvin Beecham over and uh, supplant uh, Brendan Shell, and then we would have a, a line that would look like uh, Trent Williams, uh, Kalichi Osemele, Ryan Khalil, Brian Winters, and Kelvin Beecham. Now the right side would still be our weak side, but man, our left side would be freaking awesome, uh, and our center wouldn't be that bad either. So. Um, you know, one more little little notch. Now, I know that we still have to focus on cornerbacks. Uh, we're still a little weak there, but boy, did we just get better. So, really <laughs> super excited. I can't, I can't even speak uh, without giggling because it's just like, you know, for a Jet fan, it's so unusual to see uh, positive steps being made. So, it's, it's just a wonderful feeling uh, to, to feel like you're actually getting what you want. It's like opening a Christmas present. It's just, it's just fantastic. Now... So just to add to uh, Khalil's background, now of course he's 34 years old, so um, his combine stats are a little bit out the window, but back in 2007 he did a, a 4-9 40-yard dash, and he benched 34 reps uh, on the 225 um, bench. So that's, I mean, 34 is pretty pretty damn good even today. Um, I'm sure he's pretty close to that, so uh, pretty, pretty, pretty psyched about that. He did play in Super Bowl 50 against the Denver Broncos, so he's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of playoff experience to bring to the table, too. Hopefully he can impart that to the, the, his teammates. Um, now, his injuries. In 2016, he uh, went on IR after week 11 with a shoulder injury. It was a pretty significant shoulder injury, but he came back in 2017, didn't have any problems with the shoulder, but he did have a recurring neck injury. It was pretty significant. In fact, it was enough to make him decide to retire. Um, he played six games in 2017, um, and the neck injury just wouldn't get any better, so he decided to, to, to hang him up. Now, of course, it's been a while since then, so he had, uh, um, once he retired, you know, he's had a lot of time to heal and recuperate and everything, and hopefully um, the neck injury will be a thing of the past. Of course, he's, you know, nobody's getting younger. So, you know, there is a possibility that he might have an injury here or there. If we can get him through the full season, it'll just be an amazing, amazing upside for the Jets. When Sam Darnold heard about the uh, signing, he was quoted as saying, Khalil will be a big help in the film room and on the field. There's so many things that this vet center can do. Uh, and when you hear that coming from your quarterback the day of your signing uh, as a free agent, 
just you just got to be psyched. I mean, everybody, he, Sam Darnold is thrilled um, that this guy is going to be uh, centering him the ball, and I couldn't be happier since I really picked apart the Jets' draft, um, leaving our offensive line uh, very much in doubt. So uh, really super happy about that. Now, Joe Douglas might continue to use this uh, out-of-the-box thinking. Of course, I don't. I wouldn't suggest it with cornerback. Um, now, with cornerback, you're probably going to want to stick with some young legs. I don't think you want to go and pick uh, a future Hall of Famer who's retired uh, and sign a cornerback. Probably not the best idea. The last time Darrell Rivas took the field as a Jet, uh, and by the way, Darrell Rivas is one of my favorite players of all time. But the last time he took the field as a Jet, he looked like shit. So uh, let's not use this exact same out-of-the-box thinking uh, when we go sign a cornerback. Further, also we did find out that um, one of the reasons the Jets are not signing uh, Morris Claiborne back is probably because he's staring at a four-game suspension for uh, uh, drug use. So um, when he does sign with a team, they're going to have to absorb that four-game suspension of his. So that's one of the reasons that was maybe not coming out in the media as to why the Jets may not have been looking to re-sign Claiborne, which is a shame because he would have been a very serviceable player and doesn't look like that's the right way to go at this point. As an aside, the new Madden 20 game came out and I was quick to get it, very excited to get to play with the Jets. Um, I did play uh, a game with my son recently and uh, he'll be uh, horrified for me to tell you that I smacked the living crap out of him. Uh, as a matter of fact, he shut the game off as I was in the middle of running back a kickoff return for a touchdown to put the score to something like 62 or 63 to uh, 14. So I just had to put that out there that my son, the professional gamer, was getting clapped by his father from Jets HQ. Um, and he was playing the Eagles, by the way. <laughs> I was the Jets, so just wanted to say that. Um, as a note also, with, uh, with, with Madden 20 being the topic there, uh, I do want to share a small video with you that I uh, found on the internet, thought uh, was kind of cute. Quinn Williams wanted to discuss playing the Madden game and having himself be in the Madden game, and uh, here's what he had to say about that. All right now, I got an 80 year old ultimate team, so I'm going to go play with myself today. So, see how I feel. That came out weird. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure we all echo that sentiment, Quinn. Uh, we all want to play with you <laughs> when we get home, uh, as well as play with ourselves. Uh, but if we want to play with ourselves, we have to actually create the character um, in, in Madden. Yeah. Anyway, I want to thank you guys very much once again for joining back with Jets HQ. Um, I do also want to thank one subscriber, is Jeff underscore 321 sent in this great picture of his tattoo I'll put this picture up here for you guys so you can see his tattoo thank you for sharing this with us obviously he's been a fan for a long time it's the uh, old style Jets logo there so uh, uh, Jeff 321 thank you for your continued support of the greatest team in football I do appreciate you sending me the picture uh, thank you for being a great subscriber and if any of you guys want to send in a picture for me to put on the video any of my videos for you Please uh, look in the address uh, for the address in the description below. I'll be glad to put that there. It'll be in there for you to send stuff to. Also, if you guys want to uh, help or uh, support the channel in any way, there will be a link in the description below to do that. I appreciate any support you get. Um, I really appreciate you guys being here. Please remember to subscribe. Please remember to like the video. Ring the bell for notifications so that you know when my videos are coming out. And I'm looking forward to Thursday when we lay the smack down on the Giants in preseason. So uh, we'll be back to talk all about that. And I can't wait to share it with you. So thank you guys. Welcome to the team, Ryan Khalil. Joe Douglas, you're a freaking god. And I want to thank you guys again. And remember, everybody, let's go Jets.